Hello. Let me turn down the volume on this music just a little bit. But welcome to Archival Adventures. We've been away for a week. <laughs> so thank you for uh, joining us today. Sorry, one second here. Let me, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so today's Wednesday, uh, which means that we have another Archival Adventures today. Um, today we're exploring the Blacksburg Women's Club records uh, from 1907 to 1972. Um, I'm Anthony Wright Day Hernandez, Community Collections Archivist here at Virginia Tech. Uh, before we begin, I have just a couple of acknowledgments to make. Um, we acknowledge the Tudelo and Monacan people, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognize their continuing connection to the land, water, and air that Virginia Tech consumes. We pay respect to the Tudelo and Monacan nations and to their elders past, present, and emerging. We also acknowledge that Virginia Tech's Blacksburg campus was previously the site of the Smithfield Plantation. At any point from 1774 to 1865, the Preston family enslaved 40 to 100 African men, women, and children on this land. We pay respect to these those souls and acknowledge that Virginia Tech is undeniably tied to this legacy. And one moment, I forgot to turn on the captions, so I will finish the last acknowledgement once I do that. Um, hi Hannah, welcome in. Um, uh, further, we acknowledge that Virginia Tech's Blacksburg campus was previously the site of the Solitude Estate, which enslaved at least 30 African men, women, and children on this land. Uh, we acknowledge the contributions of the Fraction family and other enslaved persons in the creation and emergence of Virginia Tech as a major land-grant university. Oh! <laughs> welcome, 16-bit uh, Eric. Sorry, that was an abrupt transition there. Uh, welcome, Whimsies. Uh, welcome to Archival Adventures. This is a show I do every Wednesday afternoon, uh, showing off items from the Virginia Tech Special Collections and University Archives. Um, so welcome in. Uh, Rel, I will have to do that hat trick another time. I only have the one hat with me. Um, I forgot to turn it off for today. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, I, will, uh, I will keep a note of the hat trick and I will do a hat change for you on Saturday if, you, um, if you'd like Rel. Otherwise, uh, next time you pop in on one of my streams, um, Definitely remind me of it so that I can get that hat trick done for you. Um, anyway, welcome to uh, Archival Adventures. Today we are looking at the Blacksburg Women's Club records. Uh, the Blacksburg Women's Club was started in 1907 and um, shut down in 1970. And so we have records from the club as well as a number of scrapbooks from them that are quite interesting. Um, so I hope you will stick around and explore these with me on Archival Adventures today. Um, <laughs> well, it's fine. Um, hat trick means that I will change my hat, um, but I don't have hats here to switch my hat out uh, while I do this show on Wednesdays. So I usually turn off that redemption and I completely forgot. Um, Oh, that is new. I haven't seen that before. Uh, the um, the Twitch is notifying me that one more person needs to sub, gift, or use bits, and a train will start. Uh, so if you are at all interested in attracting a train to that channel, um, that is there for you. Uh, so going to actually try and start things in, but uh, I should say hello to everybody that stopped by. Um, again, 16-Bit Eric, thank you so much for bringing the raid on over. It is always lovely having the Whimsies stop by. I will say also happy birthday to Jody Hauser, um, uh, since I know that you were there. And there it goes. There is a hype train. Uh, thank you, Be Right UK, for, uh, for that. Uh, let me, let me uh, get to the thank yous in just a second. But um, hello to Hannah, who is on the VTWell Studios channel. That is lovely. Um, I, I always enjoy having you. You stop by for almost all of my streams, and I definitely recognize that having you here, um, I, I, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, Adventures of Tony, welcome. Wraith Faye, uh, welcome. Uh, Darth Pillow, <laughs> welcome in. Oh, hi, Kira. Um, uh, let's see, and there's Eric in the chat with the waves. Um, Lord Portico, thank you so much for the bits. Um, 
And be right, UK, thank you for the gift subs there. Um, and then Hannah, Hannah threw 100 bits too. So <laughs> thank you so much. Um, it's, it means a lot to, to get support, especially when I'm doing um, what's essentially an educational stream today. Uh, so Unrel, thank you for the bits. Um, like so much of Twitch is the, uh, the gaming aspect. And um, so having you all stop by regularly for an exploration of history and then, and then throwing your support to me. Oh my gosh, Darth Pillow. <laughs> Thank you for the, the gift subs. How many gift subs was that? 10? Wow. <laughs> um, that, that is a, a, a big sneak attack there. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was planning to get to the content, but I, I think there is a there is a, a train that has hit level four on on the Rogan Twenty Seven channel. So, uh, wow! Thank you. <laughs> um, again, always lovely to have everyone stop by and and say hello. Um, that is that is a hype train. Um, wow, so many, so many names that I recognize in the gift subs too. That is, that is good. Uh, I mean, 16-bit Eric and Beth and uh, Sir Beast, um, Philosoph, Vance got a gift sub, Lord Partico, Partico, did you just kill a train? You just killed a level five train. <laughs> Thank you so much. 183%? <laughs> Wraith. Thank you. Uh, wow. Thank you all so much for the support. It means a lot. It has been, I've only been streaming for like four months and and really, really, it does mean so very much uh, when I get support. Pew pews of feelings just here for coffee, exactly. <laughs> um, that's uh, some very, very roguish uh, sneak attacking there. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. I I do have actual content that I have to pay attention to though because this is Wednesday streams are also part of my job. So I'm going to try and do that, but uh there are still 2 minutes left in that hype train and um I do very much appreciate every every little bit that you send my way. Um I'm going to try which I don't even know which view I'm supposed to do anymore. This, I think, that's the one that I want. Yes? No? Maybe so. Yes. <laughs> you have all done a very big distract. And I love you for it. <laughs> yeah, who knew Wednesday could be so brutal? Um, so, content. I have content. It's, it's more than just me being distracted by goings on in chat. Um, I, I, it really, really it is. Um, Blacksburg Women's Club records. Virginia Tech. That's what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> um, so as you can see here, some of this collection has been digitized and is available online. I haven't actually looked at that before. Ooh, look, it's our website. And it has stuff on it. Uh, it looks like there's some correspondence here from Mrs. F.N. Atkins to Sergeant Shriver in 1965 that has been digitized and is available online. What? Be right, UK. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Q. 
Kira for putting the finding aid in the, the chat there. Um, I, I have the finding aid. It is what you see on screen behind me. Um, finding aid is how we describe what's in a collection of material, and uh, that helps people to um, find out what's in that collection and see if they're interested in the content. Whew, yeah, turnabout is fair play. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. It, it indeed is. But thank you all so, so very much. Um, I probably just made a big noise with hitting my mic there, but thank you. Thank you for that hype train. Um, okay, Blacksburg Women's Club. Uh, Here's what I was looking for, administrative history. So this is um, a little bit of information about the club before we dive into actually looking at the documents. I'll give you a sneak peek at the document, though. Um, like I said, this collection has a lot of <coughs> scrapbooks. And so I've set up to be able to actually show off <laughs> the scrapbooks from this um, organization. So we will definitely be diving into these um, in just a second, but I wanted to go over a little bit of the history of the club first. <laughs> Rel, I love the new emote. Uh, I think all of the emotes are bardic emotes, um, which I wasn't expecting, but they are very welcome. Um, so first I want to look at a little bit of the history. So. Uh, the history as written by one of our archivists when they processed this collection. Uh, this is a basic description of the Blacksburg Women's Club, what it was, why it existed. Um, Arising from a desire to improve the cultural and environmental aspects of life in the Blacksburg area, the Women's Civic Betterment Club was founded in 1907, led by its first president, Mrs. R. H. Hudnall, the organization became affiliated with the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs in 1912 and was renamed the Blacksburg Women's Club in 1914. Throughout the next several decades, the club was involved in a number of local civic improvement projects involving community beautification, public health, civil defense, charity, and cultural programs. The Blacksburg Garden Club was originally a committee within the Blacksburg Women's Club before voting to form an independent organization in 1930. Another offshoot organization, the Blacksburg Junior Women's Club, was created in 1935 and continues to be active today, 2003. Um, the Women's Club disbanded in 1970. <clears throat> so I think most of what we're going to look at today is going to be the scrapbooks. That is the core of the collection. Um, there are financial records, committee meeting minutes, other things like that that are of um, significant interest uh, to anybody who's interested in community organizations and community clubs like this. Um, but kind of the core of this collection is these scrapbooks. Uh, and so that is what I'm planning to focus on today. Um, however, uh, Kira did link the finding aid in the chat. So if you see something listed in the finding aid that you're interested in looking at, uh, let me know and I'll pull it out and we can take a look. Um, I'm going to try and I'm juggling like three screens right now. I was going to say four, but that's an exaggeration, and I'll try and actually be honest. I'm juggling like three screens right now. Um, I also have it so I can hear the music. Um, so if the same song repeats over and over again, I can switch music channels. And if, uh, if the music gets weird, I'll actually know this time and can change things, because uh, before, that I, I didn't have any way to hear the music. I'm going to take a sip of water, so I have to back away from the book. Also, if anybody has any general questions about archives, what archivists do, how to become an archivist, um, 
what kinds of things we collect, uh, what can be found in our collections, things like that. I'm very happy to um, try and answer them. Also, archivist Kira is um, one of my mods and is an actual archivist as well and may be able to answer questions too. Um, because I don't necessarily know all of the answers to everything. But uh, this, we'll, we'll start with this um, scrapbook. This is 1938-1939. Um, and we have a clipping here, the new officers of Blacksburg Women's Club. Uh, the pages here are somewhat fragile, uh, kind of dried out, um, acidified paper. Uh, and, and the newsprint on here is actually more acidic than the page itself and um, has actually discolored the, the facing page. But uh, pictured in the lounge of the faculty center at VPI, which is um, Virginia Polytechnic Institute, um, Blacksburg are recent, oh, in the faculty center at VPI Blacksburg are recently elected officers of the Blacksburg Women's Club. They are left to right Mrs. P. M. Reeves, corresponding secretary, Mrs. C. O. Handley, president, Mrs. H. A. Klingenpeel, treasurer, Mrs. Allen D. Edwards, recording secretary, and Mrs. C. A. Montgomery, vice president. That's from the Roanoke Times on March 22, 1938. <clears throat> This is one of this is the largest thing I have ever tried to show with this document camera, uh, so it's a learning process for me, um, and hopefully all will go well. <laughs> um, here we have a little book pasted into this scrapbook: Blacksburg Women's Club, Blacks Blacksburg, Virginia, 1938 to 1939. Their motto, service, the debt of education. Their colors were blue and gold. They meet the third Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. in the Faculty Center. <clears throat> Organized November 24th, 1907, State Federation 1913, and General Federation 1925. Ooh. Gently turning pages. There is a president's message. Dear club members, I have to lean in to be able to read this because it's sideways in reality. And so I'm reading it off this tiny, tiny little um, viewer on my window here. Uh, As we begin our work together for this year, it is my earnest desire to guard faithfully the welfare of the club, to promote programs for our own betterment, intellectual and social, and through your interest and support to meet the challenge of the Federation theme, and so do our part to help adjust democracy to human welfare for the betterment of our community. There are new conditions and new problems all about us that we may help, that we may help solve. More than ever, there is a definite place in our community for an active women's club. It is our, <clears throat> is our club filling that place? Will you, as members, make an effort to participate in club projects as the opportunities of service are presented? May we pledge, may we pledge ourselves to work together in greater service and loyalty and press on with renewed interest and zeal to the tasks that are before us and so follow the theme of the Virginia Federation, look to the work the times reveal. Sincerely, Nell Hall Handley. <clears throat> so essentially a charge to the club by the club president in 1938, um, which would have been, um, this is like Great Depression era, a lot of like the, the 1930s was when things like community chests and community betterment clubs were fairly common. Um, so this would have followed in that sort of vein. 
then we have a membership list, officers and committee chairmen, past presidents, members, <laughs> lots of members, and then their program. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. I don't, I haven't done a um, sideways view like this with this camera before, so I'm not 100% sure how well it's gonna work. <laughs> uh, so they had civic welfare projects, speakers from local organizations, Federation luncheon, club anniversary featuring past presidents, their Christmas program, international relations, character education, and human relationships. <laughs> um, I mean, 1930s women's club, I suppose that makes sense as a topic. My impressions of Ireland, speaker Miss Lucy Lancaster. So, Interesting note, this is, um, this is an item that we have mostly, I think, because it is local history, um, and local history is one of our collecting areas, but uh, Lucy Lee Lancaster was actually one of the first women to attend Virginia Tech as a student as well, so this would also, um, and, and plus the women's club was somewhat associated with Virginia Tech. So this would also sort of fit within um, Virginia Tech history. I'm getting a note. Oh dear, are captions not working? Um, so I see things are being recorded on the Virginia Tech channel. They're not being recorded. Oh dear. We did some audio work, so that might have affected One second, bear with me. Uh, you can all look at the lovely program. Um, microphone, microphone. Testing the microphone, does it hear me? <clears throat> it does not. Let me um, restart the captioner. I'm now testing the captioner, and it is still not seeing my microphone. Well, uh, so Alice is going to come down in a second and um, see if she can solve the caption issue. Um, wait. Is it? OK, th it is working now. Maybe? I have no idea. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, I do not know. Hang on. Testing? Are they working? We're going to have one of those days. Uh, All right, so they are working on the VTUL Studios channel. Um, if you do need captions, I would suggest going over there. Um, sort of working here. 
Uh, I don't know what's going on. I tried switching the microphone input, and I, I can't see them myself. Um, yeah, so if they're working on one channel and not the other, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. And if you do need the captions, please go to VTUL Studios um, channel. That is twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios, where I am told they are currently working. Um, and we will try and troubleshoot why they're not working on the Rogan 27 channel at the moment, because um, uh, I'm not sure they've always worked in the past. And it has something, it has to be something to do with it just not recognizing the microphone. Uh, but I don't know, I, I don't know why that would be or what would be doing it. Um, oh, you know, huh. It could also be that after I reloaded it, I didn't turn it back on. Uh, so maybe that will fix it. <laughs> Um, I can hope, but also if it doesn't work, then it is working on the other channel. So, hey, I think I got them working on both channels. <laughs> so, um, great. Uh, I'm going to move on from this program book and move to the next page of the scrapbook here and see what we find. Um, Club officers here, state president. <laughs> I have succeeded in making captions work, um, which I am actually really, really happy about because I think the captions are very important. Uh, and while they're not perfect because they are automated, um, I do try very hard to make sure they're present. So uh, let's see, officers from a number of clubs throughout the district attended a meeting at Christiansburg last week to hear Mrs. Fred M. Alexander, president of the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, uh, shown in the picture are Mrs. T.T. T. Harris, president of Roanoke County Federation, Mrs. C.O. Handley, president of the Blacksburg Club, Mrs. Horace Bass of Roanoke, incoming president of the first district, Mrs. P.L. Killey, President of the Narrows Club, Mrs. W. L. Newman, President of the Radford Club, Mrs. R. I. Roop, and Mrs. R. H. Dyer, President of the Roanoke Women's Club. That is from the Roanoke Times, April 3rd, 1938. That's some, some uh, just looking at the style of the clothing. Uh, so this would, it's 1938. Um, there's some dress suits happening as well as some dresses, but you see that the woman on the left there has a skirt suit on. She has a blazer and, and a skirt. Um, they all have the hats. Um, I don't know exactly what time hats fell out of fashion for women. I'm guessing it was sometime during World War II. So not too much further along than this. Uh, but definitely here in 1938, they still had the, the hats. Yeah, <laughs> Hannah, you didn't go out at all in the 30s without a hat. I mean, I don't go out at all today without a hat, so. State Federation of Women's Clubs. Here we have a call for the 31st Annual Convention of Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, April 27th, 28th, and 29th, 1938. And there is a little blue ribbon attached. Um, the card has sort of come out of it. I'll see if I can. There it goes. 
uh, Mrs. C. O. Handley. 31st Annual Convention, Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, Roanoke. Um, I'll see if I can turn this page. This is taped in with cellophane tape, um, which generally gets referred to as Scotch tape today, um, but Scotch is a brand name. Oh, you've been doing some research on fashion in the 30s. Yeah, so something like this news article gives a good look at what women in the 30s, at least in Southwest Virginia, were wearing. <laughs> um, oh, it was at the Hotel Patrick Henry. In, in Roanoke, Virginia. I don't think you can see that part. I can try and tilt the camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, trying to get to the inside of the little document without really messing with the cellophane tape that's on here, because it is old cellophane tape. It hasn't completely dried up, but that also just means it's going to be yucky if I touch the sticky part. <laughs> um, the theme of this convention, citizenship is the heart, the hub, and the hearthstone of a community. And they've got the keynote printed there, pre-convention meetings. So women's clubs were a thing in the 30s. I'm going to skip ahead. I'm not going to do page by page in the scrapbook because I want to pull out some of the other scrapbooks and look at some of the other years. Visiting club women will tour gardens. Oh. I really, really wish I had a bigger field of view on the camera, but also this field of view lets you actually see it. So <laughs> we just take some adjusting. Um, they're going to tour some gardens, many things planned. I'm going to put this one aside unless somebody screams because I want to look at some of the other years and see what we find. Um, also there's a book in here that I don't remember where it was. Uh, that I definitely want to show off. I'll see if I can figure out where it is. Um, book, book, book. Bank statements, scrapbooks. I think it might be in box eight. I'm just going to pull that out and see, because I, I found it and scanned a page from it um, that I used. Yeah. I used that for like the tw Twitter image that I sent out. Um, and I thought it was a neat book, so I want to be able to show that off, too. <clears throat> Most of this is brand new to me, but I do go through on Fridays and try and pull an image to use in the tweet um, from whichever collection I'm going to show off. Ooh. So let's look at this scrapbook. I don't know what year it is. Uh, it looks like it's 1936. It is much smaller. It has a little windmill embossed on the cover. Blacksburg Woman's Club. So these are heavier pages. Um, they kind of feel similar to like construction paper, but not quite as, um, I want to say, cheap as construction paper. They're a little tighter knit <laughs> feel, a little tighter. Uh, but definitely still very acidic paper. Um, Virginia State Federation song. It's an air all through the night. 
I don't know that tune, so I won't be singing it. But come from sea and plain and mountain, kindred are ye, are, are we, fair Virginia's loyal daughters, blessed may we be. Come with thoughts, with love o'erflowing, willing hands and spirits glowing, and with joy that passes knowing each friend to see. Shine our spirit of devotion in this world of need, hand in hand a band of women up and onward lead. Formed are we a federation for the home and state and nation, mother heart for all creation, true in word and deed. May sweet fellowship attend us all through each day. Zeal inspire and faith defend us, thus do we pray. Let us see a wrong to right it, let us evil know to fight it. Where the path is dark, God light it with brightest ray. So that is the song for the Virginia State Federation of Women's Clubs from 1936. And we have pictures here of the William Preston Hotel. It is labeled as our meeting place. Um, I don't know the location of this hotel. Uh, Kira, if you do, I would love it if you would let me know. Because um, looking at it, I'm not 100% sure. It looks, if it's in Blacksburg, it looks like it could be on the corner of Main Street and College Avenue. And it would be like, apartments on the second floor and restaurants on the bottom floor today. Um, but I'm, I'm not certain that's the intersection that I'm looking at. But it does look possible that it is an intersection where uh, that's just off campus in, on Main Street in Blacksburg today. I'm not certain though. It's College in Maine. OK, thank you, Kira. That's what I thought. Um, I'm not sure what's there today. I know a year ago, before everything shut down for the pandemic, there was a Moe's. Oh, it's, it's where Sharky's is. So it's on the other side of the street from where I was thinking it was. Anyway, there are restaurants there now <laughs> instead of a hotel. Um, Women's Club at Blacksburg Meets. If you see uh, one of the articles that you're particularly interested in having me read, I will be happy to do so. Just let me know. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to read every single one of them. Um, there's a lovely little paper money for school library um, in the shape of a book with a little bookmark coming out of it. Blacksburg forms parent-teacher body. That's interesting. 1936. I don't have the newspaper, uh, but this was October 4th, 1936. A special committee of the Blacksburg Women's Club and representatives of the teachers group met with parents of school children and other interested persons Tuesday to organize a local parent-teacher association. Mrs. A.T. Leward presided. The following officers were elected, President J.R. Castleman, First Vice President Mr. Cook, Second Vice President Dr. Fippen, Third Vice President Mrs. Chaplin, Treasurer Mrs. L.O. Price, Secretary Mrs. E.P. Johnson. The next meeting of the Women's Club will be held on October 16th. Mrs. Soren as Speaker, Third Vice President of the PTA. I don't know why they need so many vice presidents. <laughs> um, hey. What? No, I didn't. Sorry. But that's okay. <laughs> mm. 
one second. Uh. Yep, I'm talking. I just had to put on a mask because because you were coming in the room. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Alice popped in to make an adjustment on my audio. Um, I think I was peaking quite a bit. Is that what was happening? Yeah. Okay. And I tried to adjust it on the call because I think it starts to voice the screen there. I, I had thought it might be because I could see the light over there and it was going into yellow and red. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you're good now. It's not you. You were just green now. Um, Occasionally it'll go a little bit higher, but it's mostly just green. Okay. I can also try and uh, not talk so loud so that people's ears don't hurt so much. Yeah, it's all <laughs> Thank you. Um, Women's Club of Blacksburg will meet Wednesday. This one's just slotted in. Midwinter brides to be honored at reception. Okay, that sounds kind of creepy to me but let's let's read and find out what midwinter brides is talking about all right i'm now alone in the room again so i can take the mask back off um because yes we are still in the middle of a pandemic while some of us have gotten at least one uh vaccine shot um we have not reached the point where maskless daily activity is recommended. Uh, Blacksburg, January 16th, 1936, special. The Blacksburg Women's Club will have its regular meeting Wednesday afternoon, January 20th at 3.30 o'clock at the William Preston Hotel. Subjects for discussion will be Virginia literature, old and new, and Virginia art. Mrs. A.T. Lewerk will lead the literature discussion and Mrs. Robert G. Conley, the one on art. An art exhibit loaned by the Virginia Art Alliance of Richmond will be on display. This will consist of pictures in watercolor, etchings, woodcuts, and some linotype. There's nothing there about midwinter brides and a reception. I don't understand. I really don't get that. That was like false advertising. Oh no, Blacksburg Facts is a hashtag now on the VTUL Studios channel. Uh, the William Preston Hotel was built in 1934 and lasted until at least 1960. Thank you, Kira, for the hashtag Blacksburg Facts. All right, Blacksburg Women's Club. February 15th, 1936. Dear Mrs. Starr, Mrs. Giles, State Director of Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, sent the following letter to me and I am passing it on to you so that you may be reminded to bring your contribution to the club meeting Wednesday, February 19th. As chairman of the foundation fund, I am making an appeal to you as we do not have a great deal of time to put across our various projects. You know, of course, that the time for raising this foundation fund has been extended five years, and last May at Lexington Convention we voted to make an effort to raise our appointment, er, our apportionment if possible. <clears throat> the amount to be raised is 50 cents a year per capita for five years. Yeah, that's what it says, 50 cents a year per capita for five years. We are near the bottom of the list of states in raising this fund. But I feel sure that in the next few years, we will make every effort to do our part. One half of the amount raised remains in our own state, which should increase our interest. As our Federation extends its work, more money will be needed to carry on efficiently, and I do trust you will make this project a definite part of your club work for the next five years. I would like to suggest that February be set apart as the month in which to attempt to raise this money. If on the 1st of March each club member would put aside one penny a week next February, you would have more than the necessary amount. If you cannot come to the meeting, will you please send 50 cents to Mrs. Pritchard? Mrs. Giles must send her report in March 1st. 
so please be prompt in sending or bringing your contribution. Cordially, Mrs. Virginia P. Connolly, President, Blacksburg Women's Club. It's interesting how many of these clubs existed and managed to raise money during the 30s, given the Depression. Um, so I don't know particulars of this club, but the 1930s was big on, it, it was prime time for communities pooling resources together into organizations like this. So the Women's Club, um, other fraternal organizations, a lot of community chest organizations, the whole idea of community chest um, from like the Monopoly game is based on organizations that were actually formed in the 1930s um, in response to the depression. And so um, people would pool together as much money as they could in order to help the entire community survive. And um, that definitely happened here in Blacksburg. I do believe we have some records from the Blacksburg community chest. Let me double check. Um, I know we have something community chest because I processed it my first year here. Uh, oh, it's called the Blacksburg Community Federation. Um, and I can definitely share that sometime if people would be interested. Um, it's not a very extensive collection, but we do have some papers from them. Um, but yeah, that basically people would pool together money and then that money raised by charity in the 1930s would be used to help a family who, uh, you know, the breadwinner lost their job and they needed help buying groceries for the week or buying seeds to plant a garden. Um, communities, they wouldn't just gather money either. They would actually, um, an organization like this uh, would actually send people over to somebody's house to help them set up a garden plot so that they could grow their own food. Um, so all sorts of things like that were associated with organizations like the Blacksburg Women's Club, the Blacksburg Community Federation, um, and other like fraternal organizations. Um, and that was just a common thing in the 30s because everybody was on hard times. Everybody was dealing with the fallout of the financial collapse in 1929 and everybody just kind of banded together and helped each other. Um, but it is worth noting that this organization uh, the, the Blacksburg Women's Club here was exclusive to white people and all of their community fundraising, all of their community organizing, all of their community service was for white people. Um, there were, there were, um, there was a fraternal organization here for the black community um, and now that I have decided that I need to mention it, my brain is not going to give it to me. Um, even though I work with it all the time. Uh, I remember the women's version of it. Sorry, it's the um, Blacksburg, Virginia Odd Fellows. So the Odd Fellows um, organization was the, the black men's fraternal organization. Um, the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows. Um, and they're still here in Blacksburg, but there's also, they had the Household of Ruth, which was the, the black women's uh, organization. Um, and so I will pull out those at some point and we will definitely look at them as well because I think they're a very interesting collection to review. Um, and th so they served a similar purpose for the black community here. Um, this was the book that I wanted to make sure that I show the Blacksburg Women's Club History, 1907 to 1938. Um, and it just looks like any old regular book. The cover is, is a printed cover. But when you open it up, it's basically just an empty book that then has been typed and had pictures pasted in. 
Um, so it's a bound printed book. Blacksburg Women's Club History, 1907 to 1938. But then this is an actual photograph pasted to the page. Everywhere there's a photograph in this book, it is a photograph that is pasted in, which I thought was interesting. The photos in this book are not printed with the pages. The pages were printed, and then the, the pictures were then added, um, which I'm not sure how common that is. I'm not a rare books expert. Uh, I don't know a, a lot about book construction. Um, Honestly, the last time I really did anything related to book construction was when I was in like third grade, because uh, that has just not been the focus of my study. Um, but I did find it very interesting that these are actual like photographs that were then added into a pre-printed book. Um, so it starts out to Mrs. R. H. Hudnall, president of the Blacksburg Women's Club, 1907 to 1915. We dedicate this book. She's all too modest to agree, but mother of this club is she. What Blacksburg Woman's Club has done was by her faithful work begun. The history of the Blacksburg Woman's Club told in simple narrative style by some of the past presidents and the rest compiled by myself as historian. The days of our years are memories and cannot be taken from us. Someone has said the remembrance of a beautiful thing or a personal relationship is the chief end of life. Remembrance is the one sure immortality we know. So this little book is written lest we forget. Uh, Minnie Aiken Woolwine, club historian. Um. <clears throat> And I do believe that the station I have this set to <clears throat> only has two songs that are playable without risk of uh, copyright violation. So I'm going to switch stations to another one so that maybe we can get some different music. Because <laughs> we've been hearing the same two songs over and over. Um. Oh, there's a, oh, I just read the forward. There's a table of contents here. Um, collect for club women, Virginia State Federation song, charter members, past presidents, and then there's some poems. Uh, and then the, the summaries written by the different presidents. I'm going to flip to some of the poetry, because well, why not, if I can find it. Collect for Club Women, Virginia State Federation Song, Charter Members, Past Presidents, yes, <laughs> sorry, uh, Past Presidents. Oh, and then we have Mrs. F.W. Ert, Charter Member and Poet Laureate. Our Women's Club. We boast friends today that we're sweet 22, and our heartiest welcome is extended to you. We proudly own to these tender years, but many returns a woman fears. We're bra we've bravely tackled the tasks we've met and have conquered them all by our toil and sweat. Sometimes with our club we've fought and won, Sometimes with love we have overcome. We've planted trees and flowers and shrubs, laid sidewalks where mud was up to the hubs. On the high school, our favorite child, we've bestowed much labor to make it a pleasant abode. Where our children are taught to read, write, and spell, where the teachers are wielding the chastening rod well. <laughs> Furnished music for dancing to cultivate grace on the walls, we've hung pictures to beautify taste. To the Red Cross, we never have turned a deaf ear, and all tales of woe we've been ready to hear. Stood by the town council in every great move, the resting place of the dead we've helped to improve. The home economics a friend in us has found, 
To the men we have shown that we can't be kept down. They can prate of the wonderful things they have done, but we fling in their teeth the battles we've won. Here's a most hearty welcome as the meeting we call from club, college, and town with a God bless you all. Virginia S. Ert. So that's interesting. It kind of talks about the various things the club does. Um, gardening, planted trees, flowers, and shrubs. They laid sidewalks. Um, they furnished music for dancing uh, at the, looks like at the school hung pictures, donated to the Red Cross. Whether that be time or money, I'm not certain based on a poem. <laughs> um, stood by the town council, improved the graveyard. So just kind of a little poetry summary of the things that the club had been up to. see if what else I can find in the scrapbooks. Um, and again, if there's something particular that you see in the finding aid that you would like me to share, do let me know and I'll be happy to pull it out. Um, here we have a scrapbook. Uh, I'm guessing this is 1957. It has 1907 and 1957 at the top. Um, so I'm assuming it's 1957. Um, there's a little, lovely little, like, garden illustration in the center there. The cover, <laughs> the top cover on this one is not attached. Oh, I pulled out the Golden Jubilee. <laughs> um, let's try and get this centered properly here. Did I do it? No, that way. It's hard because the orientation of the camera and where the book is are sideways to how they normally would be for me to look at it. Um, it. It took me until right before we went live to figure out how to switch the orientation so that I could deal with an item as tall as this. Um, right, okay. So we have the Golden Jubilee. We have Mrs. P.M. Reeves, President, Blacksburg Women's Club, 1956 to 1957. Um, and actually, I just had a thought. I'm going to switch off the document cam for one second and see if I can move the camera so that it will be easier for me to do what I'm trying to do with the camera. All right, back to focusing on the document. I think we got it. Yep. This way, it's right side up to me instead of sideways to me. <laughs> I have solved the problem. All right, Golden Jubilee these lovely um, relief stickers here. Uh, they are, they say v VFWC, which would be the um, Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, and they have the Virginia state flag, um, and they are in blue and gold. <coughs> 1907 to 1957, Blacksburg Woman's Club Dinner, 6.30 p.m. High School, Program 8 p.m. Auditorium, Honoring Charter Members, RSVP, Mrs. Paul M. Reeves, President, and it's written in golden ink, 1957, golden ink. Um, it, it appears this was pasted in 
but the paste has dried up so that uh, I believe this is how it would have originally been located on the page. Um, but all of the cardboard is, the cardboard's no longer attached to the page itself. And the paper with the golden ink on it on, on the top is also not attached to the cardboard anymore. Interestingly, the two pieces of cardboard are still attached to each other. page here gently gently I don't want to like knock out anything again items are no longer pasted in place um, everything's blue and gold which are the colors for the Blacksburg Women's Club uh, there's a lovely little hand-drawn illustration of a woman in a, a hat that hat reminds me of um, the mom's hat from uh, Mary Poppins. Um, there is some writing in gold down at the very bottom here. Um, it's very hard to make out and it doesn't show up on the screen at all. Uh, it just says Blacksburg Women's Club 1907 to 1957. Um, this is made from cardboard. Golden Jubilee, General Chairman, Mrs. Susie Mang Mangas. I don't know how to say that name. Uh, 1907 to 1957, dedicated to our charter members, Mrs. Wirt Dunlap, Mrs. Ann Faulkner, Mrs. J.K. Grossclose, Mrs. Claudius Lee, Mrs. H.B. Pack, and Mrs. J.B. Tutwiler. I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to get into the history right now, but the uh, Claudius Lee, uh, there's some history there. <laughs> um, if you do a little bit of Googling of Claudius Lee and Virginia Tech, you'll see that we um, recently renamed a residence hall because it was named after him. Uh, menu, program. So this was a, a turkey dinner. Uh, they sang the song, um, had the song America, had the salute to the flag, and then an invocation followed by dinner, introduction of special guests, a response, claim to fame by panel and moderator, Resume of the past 50 years of the Blacksburg Women's Club, and then some special music. <laughs> some illustration here. Um, Blacksburg, Virginia. 1907 is what this, this uh, illustration is supposed to illustrate, 1907. We've got the train. Um, Tutwiler Inn. This says a black company. Jen Mids. I'm not sure what that is doing. They've got people ice skating on a pond. Some cadets in formation marching. A cow below some mountains. Um, I'm not sure what this building is meant to be. Uh, woman in a hat with an umbrella down here. Um, a horseless carriage and a horse-drawn carriage. Early 1900s, yeah, so that style hat. <coughs> this is put together with staples. Uh, they have rusted, as staples are wont to do over time. Um, Blacksburg Women's Club, organized November 24th, 1907 at the Tutwiler in Blacksburg, Virginia. Service, debt of education. That to me is a very strange motto. but. <clears throat> That's what their motto was. 
This is a lovely scrapbook, but the, the paste that they used to paste these things in did not stand the test of time. Radford News Journal and the Roanoke Times both covered the event. Women's Club to observe Golden Jubilee. Uh, let's see, I might be able to zoom in a little bit. The buttons are further from me now. You were pulling paper clips off some papers from your mom's family the other day. And you didn't want any more rust to accumulate. Yeah. Um, I think they do make um, <clears throat> paper clips that are designed not to rust, like metal ones that shouldn't rust. Um, they also make the plastic coated ones, which are better than the, the full metal ones. Um, and then they make what are called plastic clips uh, that are fully plastic. Um, as, as means of binding papers together to keep them in groups, um, they're fine for general use. For long-term preservation, it's best to just like have a folder for, for things uh, that you want to keep together. Um, we use plastic clips here in the archives. Uh, the the trade-off is that they, they bend pages. Like, you can't put a, a clip on the page without bending the paper. Um, but also, when we are taking a metal paper clip off of something, we just replace it with a plastic clip because it's better than the paper clip and achieves the same purpose. Um, One of these days, when you have slightly fewer projects, you'll start scanning the papers from her family. Yeah, and that is a good a good backup to have is to scan them and and have them digital. Um, it is always nice to have the the physical paper too, because um, then you get artifacts like this where people have uh, can do scrapbooks and things like that, and and they're nice. They're fun to look at. They're there's something there's something people enjoy about actually being able to touch pieces of history like this. Um, the scans are great for doing research or doing like just accessing the content of something and, and learning from it. Uh, but there is definitely something to be said for having physical objects to be able to, to touch and know that like this newspaper article was printed in 1957 and has survived all this time. Yeah, it, you love going through them, but you want to be able to share them with others and not lose them entirely. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. Um, oh, we've got some photographs here of their golden anniversary dinner. I don't know how well these will show up, of course, because they're glossy photos. Very 1950s in look. Booped the camera. <laughs> so, Golden Jubilee, they had a big celebration with various speakers. Let's see what else we have. What else? We have 1939 and 1940, where the cover of this book has been cross-stitched. <laughs> Blacksburg Women's Club, 1939 to 1940. Very unique way of doing that. Oh, here we have a plastic clip, as I was just talking about. This was originally stapled together, and you can see the rust uh, has left marks on the pa page. 
um, and we took out the staples and put in a plastic clip instead. Uh, so we've got a bunch of signatures here. Presumably these are from all of the members of the club. So. And then one of the things I like about this one, so they had the cross stitch uh, title on the front. Um, and inside they decorated the pages with little X's to mimic that on the pages themselves. Which I thought was a really, really nice design touch. Um, whoever put the scrapbook together actually clearly, clearly cared um, about what it looked like and, and put a lot of time and effort into putting together this scrapbook. Um, 1939 to 1940, service, the dead of education. So they've got a little booklet here, collect for club women, state federation song, officers, chairman, standing committees, presidents, the president's message. So this, again, this is going to be 1939-1940, the president's message that year. Dear club members, Bacon once said of friendship that it doubles our joys and halves our sorrows. As we begin our club work for another year, we look forward to happy days ahead as we study and work and play together to carry on the high ideals which have been builded into the foundation of our club. In a changing world with its many new situations and problems, we are privileged to be American club women, living in a land of peace, free to pursue the work the times reveal. So let us grasp the new opportunities before us with enthusiasm and loyalty and continue step by step toward our goal, a better adjustment of democracy, democracy for human welfare. It is my earnest hope that, the, that this club year may bring to each of you the joy and satisfaction of accomplishing what is best for our own development as well as for your club and your community. Today is your day and mine, the only day we have. What our part may signify in the great world we may not understand, but we are here to play it and now it is our time. Sincerely yours, Nell H. Handley. program, list of members with phone numbers, uh, and this being 1939, those, right, 39? I keep forgetting what year I'm looking at. Uh, those phone numbers are four digits long, and that's likely all they had to dial. <laughs> There's the constitution of the club and the bylaws of the club. So there's these scrapbooks actually have a wealth of information in them for anybody who's interested in um, social clubs and civic betterment clubs. Uh, district news flashes by the district chairman. The first district now boasts 46 clubs. Abingdon Book Lovers Club gave program February 17th. Panel plan. Topic peace. Mrs. H.J. Garnand, guest speaker. Blacksburg Women's Club, weekly story hour organized for children between ages of four and six, supervised by Mrs. R.G. Connolly. That is from the Virginia Club Woman, April of 1939. And the photograph here is the members of the Arts and Crafts Department of the club. I'll zoom in a little bit here. I'm trying to be better about not zooming in like that. <laughs> As I say, I'm trying to be better. I do worse. That is the 
arts and crafts department of the club. Club scrapbook contest. That sounds interesting. Club scrapbooks constitute ideal club histories and will be highly treasured in years to come. Any Virginia Federated Club may enter the scrapbook contest by complying with the following rules. One, scrapbooks shall not, shall not be smaller than, than eight and a half by 11 inches and the name of the club must appear on the front cover. Contents, only articles or, or mementos concerning the current year shall be entered and these must pertain to club activities or club members. Place name and date under each article. Arrangement. Articles should be arranged neatly in sequence to form as nearly as practical a chronological history of the club. Leave at least one inch margin around each page. Points on scoring. Oh. You would have to check again, but your grandmother or her sister were part of an art club in Nebraska in the 30s or 40s. I mean, that would not be terribly surprising. Everybody, like, joining social clubs like this was definitely part of society. But that is really interesting, and I would I would be very interested to hear what you're able to find out. 45 points on the originality and effectiveness of the book, 30 points a con constructive value of activities and publicity, and 25 points for neatness and artistic arrangement. Each club shall send its completed book to its district scrapbook chairman, return postage included, not later than one week before the opening date of the state convention. The groups will be divided into two groups according to membership. Group A, clubs with membership of 51 and over, and Group B, clubs with membership from 1 to 50, inclusive. A senior and junior prize will be awarded to each group. In cooperation with her district president, each district chairman shall appoint suitable judges to select one winning senior and one junior book from Group A and B. These shall be brought to the state convention, where two senior and two junior books shall each receive prizes. All clubs may display scrapbooks at the state convention if they so desire. You found a program booklet in some, some stuff, but can't remember who it belonged to. So you know they were part of the club, you just don't remember which one of them it was. These are, there's a lot of stuff in here and I think it's just awesome. So a delegate ribbon for Mrs. C.O. Handley for the Richmond Convention, the 32nd annual convention of the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs. Trying to turn the pages. Ooh. Club women keys to city. I can't really, it's a newspaper that's pasted in, but the way it's pasted in, I don't think it's terribly easy. Oh wow, this really opens up. It's like two full newspaper pages taped in. Oh, I folded it incorrectly. <laughs> I can't, I, I don't know 
how I can show it off with my current camera setup. But I will see, I'm going to switch views here and see if I can show. <coughs> so we have a scrapbook page here. And it just looks like part of a newspaper page. Well, you open it up this way, and then you open it up this way, and then it unfolds again and it unfolds again. So you get this. All from that one page in the scrapbook, they get the entire spread from the newspaper. Um, speakers, officers of 32nd Convention of the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs. Oops. And I again tried to fold it incorrectly. Let's go back to the document camera here. I'm, I'm not going to try and read that one just because the paper is slightly fragile and yeah. In May, we have a ticket here for Wuthering Heights starring Merle Oberon and Laurence Olivier. Um, and a note that it is sponsored by the Blacksburg Women's Club. So they showed, they sponsored a showing. It doesn't say where they sponsored the showing, but they sponsored a showing of Wuthering Heights. <coughs> oh. Nope. Still doesn't say where. <laughs> I, I found more on Weathering Heights l further down on the page, but it, it still didn't say where it was shown. <laughs> so, uh, and so we go from May to September uh, because the Women's Club operated on um, the academic calendar, which so many things do in this town. Uh, September we have the uh, there's a lovely illustration at the bottom of the page here uh, of some books with bookends on the end and it just says curriculum Blacksburg Women's Club will hold its first fall meeting Mrs. Ruth Henderson supervisor of the elementary department of public Edu instruction who will address a meeting of the Blacksburg Women's Club on September 19th. So they're focusing on curriculum here. The Blacksburg Women's Club will hold its first fall meeting Tuesday afternoon, September 19th at 3.30 at the Faculty Center Lounge. The Education Department will have charge of the program and Ms. Ms. Ruth Henderson, Supervisor of the Elementary Department of Public Instruction, Richmond, will be guest speaker. Her topic will be the new curriculum. At the conclusion of a short musical program, the club will hold a social hour for new members. Anyone who would like to have a more comprehensive understanding of the new curriculum is cordially invited to attend this meeting. So I don't know what curricular changes happened between it happened in 1939-1940, but uh, apparently the Blacksburg Women's Club was interested in them. October. Some of these, they've pasted this on really well. It's, it almost look like, like, looks like it's printed on the page. Um, American Citizenship Program. I don't see a reference to him anywhere on the page, but Ernest DeFries, Bugler, is the person in this photograph here, but I don't see a reference to him anywhere, so I'm not sure why he's in the scrapbook. And 
here is a photograph of the Blacksburg Girl Scouts sponsored by the Women's Club. They definitely had somebody who was interested in art work on this one because it has little drawings on some of the pages and it the the whole cross stitch idea for the design of the book. What else can we find that's interesting in this one? <laughs> we get December. Got a, a neck in here. The Arts and Crafts Tea, December 1st, 1939, with a little Santa Claus there. But the next page has lots of little uh, Christmas illustrations on it with little holly leaves and a Santa. Um, and then there's like a clarinet or a recorder in the center. Um, and toward the bottom of the page, there's a little gift box and a ball and a candy cane and another gift. I just, I like the little, they're very straightforward illustrations. They're very simple illustrations, but they're also nicely done. And um, they appear to have been done with like colored pencil, but they're, they're very neat. They're all appropriate to the content of the page they're on. Somebody really thought about them and I think that they're very nice. And then in March, in we get a, a couple of shamrocks. And then on the next page, we have actual things attached to the book. We have the, the napkin from the arts and crafts meeting. And then, I don't know, these are like little, I think that's supposed to be a shillelagh on a three leaf clover. And then there's a little hat on a three-leaf clover down at the bottom. Just stuck into the pages. I'm guessing those were probably used as decorations at uh, the event, arts and crafts meeting or something. Um, oh dear. This camera does not like where I put it, but it is still working. Okay. Take a look at another one, Blacksburg Women's Club. Blacksburg, Virginia. This, I don't know what this means, but it labels it as Category C. Town publications, none. Town population, 3,359. And that would have been 1953 to 1954. Again, you can see here, so the pages in this one are blue. Oh, um, I don't know, Hannah, if it won the contest or not. The rules for the contest were inserted into it, but there was no indication that it won the contest. Um, so again, they're using cellophane tape to paste things in. Um, you can see this tape has yellowed quite a bit. Uh, it's actually started, the, it's dried out some and probably would come off the page quite easily at this point, which we don't want to do. So I will be gentle. Uh, this is the little booklet for the year. 
same kinds of contents that we've seen in others of the booklets. Just listing the goings on and doings of the club. Oh. Gotta be careful while turning these pages. Because, yeah, all of the tape in this book is, uh, is coming off the pages. <clears throat> Mrs. Hogue Hopkins speaks at meeting of women's, women's clubs. Pardon me. Oh, my eye. Uh, Thursday, March 26, 1953. We are never free until we are secure in the utilitarian side of our lives was the theme of a talk given by Mrs. O. Hogue Hopkins before a joint meeting of the Blacksburg Women's Club, Intermediate Women's Club, and Junior Women's Club March 18th in the faculty lounge in Blacksburg. Mrs. H. C. A. Halt of the Women's Club introduced Mrs. Hopkins as a past president of the Narrows Women Club and a past president of the former First District of the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs. Mrs. Dudley Thompson was re-elected president of the Blacksburg Women's Club at a business meeting which preceded Mrs. Hopkins' address. Mrs. Hopkins, state chairman of the Economic and Security Division of the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, spoke of the importance of a feminine focus on the financial conditions of the world today. In addition to all her other daily tasks, the housewife must be the manager and fin financier of the household, one of the best things that could happen to America. Therefore, it is, a, it is for women to become interested in financial affairs, she said. Three matters to which every woman should give her careful attention are investment, insurance, and inheritance. And once her interest is aroused, she should plan for a continuing financial program in her home, she said. Mrs. Hopkins stressed the importance of a wise investment of a portion of the family income, and she recommended bonds as a safe means of investment open to everyone at all times. She advised all women to be sensible and thoughtful about money, to have a plan for spending and a plan for saving, and to participate not only in the financial matters of their households, but also to study their relationships to the problems that exist in the world today. Other officers who will serve for the coming year are Mrs. W. H. Miller, first vice president and publicity chairman, Mrs. P. H. DeHart, second vice president and program chairman, Mrs. R. O. Smith, third vice president and membership chairman, Mrs. C. Rex James, recording secretary, Mrs. W. L. Gibson, Jr., corresponding secretary, Mrs. Guy Brunk, Treasurer, Mrs. Mary E. Apperson, Historian, Mrs. C. F. Mangs, Parliamentarian, Mrs. R. O. Smith, and Mrs. H. A. Klingenpeel were named delegates to represent the club at the Blue Ridge District Institute meeting to, to be held at Rocky Mount March 29th. Mrs. Thompson welcomed Mrs. E. E. Woodson, a visitor from the Narrows Women's Club, and Mrs. R. W. Engel as a new member of the Blacksburg Club. Whew. That's a lot of words <laughs> and a lot of first initial, middle initial, last name following Mrs. Ooh. Yeah, this one is slightly fragile just because all the tape is coming off of everything in this book. I'm going to set that one aside and not lose any of the, the pages. Uh, what else? What else? Here's another one with the cross stitching. Um, it also has some flowers painted on the front. Blacksburg Women's Club, 1940 to 1941. So I'm guessing designed by the same person that did 3940. Similar program there. We have a 
program for the annual convention of Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs, which happened on May 6th, 7th, and 8th, 1941, at the Wardman Park Hotel in Washington, D.C. The keynote was, Whither Have Ye Made a Road Today? 1 Samuel 27.10. which is uh, a reference to the Bible, I believe. I am not a biblical scholar, so I do think that that was a Bible reference, but could easily be wrong, because like I said, not a biblical scholar. <laughs> Don't really pay that much attention. Uh, motto, service the debt of education got the little books at the bottom again. But we've got watercolor and um, honestly I can't tell whether it's crayon or colored pencil. But we definitely have a lot of watercolor in this one. zoomed in yeah I am zoomed out as far as it'll go this is just a really big book oh wow look at the handwriting on this one <clears throat> program 1940 to 1941 meeting place faculty center time third Wednesday 3 30 p.m and they've drawn the seal of the Virginia Federation of Women's Clubs. September 18th, 1940. My flight from Austin. Nope. My flight from Austin? Austria. Austria. My flight from Austria. Uh, Hertha Bergman, refugee, Vienna, England. V Vienna, England. Music, hostesses, hostesses, uh, Mrs. J. S. Shackleton, Mrs. H. L. Dunton. October 17th, 1940. Our National Defense, Lieutenant Colonel J. H. Cochran. November 13th, 1940, 1.30 p.m., Faculty Center. 33rd Anniversary, Jubilee and Founders Day Luncheon honoring past presidents. December 18th. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> I know it sounds silly. Um, I just I never, <clears throat> never know for sure if it's like a Bible reference or an Apocrypha reference or if it's from some other book entirely. If it doesn't say, I don't know. But I assumed it was biblical because of the context. Um, <clears throat> December 18th, the Christmas party, January 15th, 1941, <clears throat> Community Safety Program. February 19th, 1941, Fine Arts Program. March 19th, 1941, Cancer Control by, uh, with Dr. Hugh Trout from Roanoke. April 16th, 1941, Arts and Crafts Program and Exhibit. May 21st, 1941, the annual meeting with the president's report and convention highlights. Yeah, I would I would really like to know who put these together cuz they did a lovely job, but it doesn't at least nowhere that I've seen does it actually list who worked on the the scrapbooks. But they they definitely spent a lot of time. Oh, we have the club flower. Club flower. The camera wants to drift to the side because it's got cords that are very, very heavy. 
that are sliding off the side of the table. There. Uh, and you can see watercolor paintings of the club flower, which is the iris. various articles of their activities in April. The Blacksburg Women's Club met this afternoon in the lounge of the Faculty Center. The program was in charge of the Arts and Crafts Department. <coughs> Mrs. Robert Hevener, Chairman. The public is invited to attend an exhibit of the work done by the members during the year, which is on display until 9 p.m. tonight at the Faculty Center. <coughs> Play presented at meeting of Women's Club. Blacksburg, April 20th. The Blacksburg Women's Club met Wednesday afternoon in the Faculty Center Lounge. Mrs. Robert Hevener, Chairman of Arts and Crafts, was in charge of the meeting. The program was in the form of play in which Mrs. Fred Hoffman, Betsy Hevener, Carol Johnson, Mary Pettinger, Helen Connolly, Mary Helen Reeves, and Ruth Hall took part, took party. Uh, Mrs. L.B. Dietrich was in charge of the music. There was an exhibit of arts and crafts made by the members during the year, which was open to the public from 9 until 11 o'clock. Hannah, that is probably a good guess that whoever was the historian for the year was the one putting the scrapbooks together. And for some reason that just never even occurred to me, but that makes a lot of sense. May. There's an article here from the Richmond Times Dispatch from May 2nd, 1940. The headline, <coughs> the headline for the article, this is the one with the, the photograph here, tells women world not going to dogs. Quote, I'm not one of those who think the world is such a bad place in which to live or that civilization is going to the dogs," unquote. Representative Charles A. Plumley of Vermont declared in an address yesterday before delegates to the 33rd Annual Convention of the State Federation of Women's Clubs at the Cha Chamberlain Hotel. He urged Americans to be deserving of the blessings bestowed on them by this democratic form of government. Representative Plumley is shown beside Mrs. J.R. Lowell, Alexandria, President of the American Citizenship Committee of the Federation. It was a very interesting headline. Tells women world not going to dogs. Hey! Library at VPI given genealogies. Uh, I'm going to read it because it's short and because it talks about where I work. <laughs> <clears throat> From the Roanoke Times. Blacksburg, May 11. Two recent gifts to the Virginia Tech Library are of particular interest to local residents. Through a gift of the Blacksburg Women's Club, purchase of children's books has been made. A three-volume set of Outlines of Montgomery County Families by Professor Harvey L. Price, Dean of the Architect Ar Agricultural School at VPI, has been presented to the library by the author. The set in yeah, the set includes the genealogies of the Barger, Bro Brochi, Cromer, Eskridge, Evans, Grissom, Harmon, Holly, Henderson, Hornbarger, Keister, Kinzer, Kipps. Long, Lincus, Lucas, Oliver, Parrish, Pate, Pepper, Price, Ridpath, Shell, Slusher, Slusser, Surface, Wall, and Walters families. Dean Price has been working on these outlines for many years, gathering his material from books, periodicals, family, church, and county records, and individuals. The selection of the children's books made possible by the gift of the Blacksburg Women's Club was made by the library staff 
and a member of the club. It is the policy of the library staff in selecting new books to choose books for pleasure reading all year, and not to compete with the school library in providing supplementary class reading. Oh wow, chat liked that one. Let me see what happened here. Uh, the best part was as soon as I saw the name Price, I knew exactly what that was. Really, Kira? Wow. Um, the Price materials plus his original notes. Yes, are in special collections in university archives. We have a, a rather extensive local geneolo genealogy resource collection. Um, it, it's one of the things that we have. Uh, Dwlib, um, yeah, I, the handwriting in this is really, really nice. I, it's very easy to read and meticulously done. I mean, it looks meticulous. Um, <clears throat> so I, it, this is one of the things I like about it is it's very legible even today. <laughs> So much of the old writing, um, which we've done on stream in the past, was script and was very hard to make out. Um, so I very much appreciate for labels in something like this having uh, having much more legible handwriting. Oh, and Kira just dropped a link in for the um, the price papers, if anyone is interested. Uh, and Kira, if you could drop that link on the other uh, channel as well, that would be lovely. So this is the club women gather for convention at Chamberlain. to find December. Oh, I've gone from September to February. Um, so yes, these are actual newspaper articles that are pasted in um, uh, for everyone. Um, DWLib has asked, are these actual newspaper articles pasted in here? Are there worries for present preservation? Um, so over time, the new newsprint especially is very acidic and it will it deteriorates over time uh, a lot of that deterioration is discoloration um, which is why old newsprint turns yellow it can also get more brittle uh, there are a number of issues with this as far as preservation um, uh, things to consider uh, the the pages that the articles are pasted to are cardboard not Sorry, that is not the word that I meant to have come out of my mouth. The, the pages that they're pasted to are um, construction paper. Uh, so that is also highly acidic. Um, so as far as the newsprint being on the construction paper, there's not a lot to worry about uh, of, of one damaging the other because they're both acidic. Um, <clears throat> but these are actually glued in um, with paste of some sort. Uh, so there are a number of issues uh, that all of these things could de deteriorate over time. These have held up really well. Um, the one we were looking at just a few minutes ago had a lot of cellophane tape in it where the adhesive was coming off of the cellophane tape and the tape itself had yellowed. Um, and generally for something like this where it's in a book, there's no big discrepancy between the articles and the pages they're glued to as far as uh, acid content. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about preservation for them. Um, if these were being used on a regular basis and handled a lot, um, exposed quite often to the air, um, if it, if it was a well-used collection, we might consider sending it out for some remediation work or some treatments to deacidify the paper. Um, those alter things as well. So uh, it, it's all a balance. It, 
what we like to say as far as archives is, it depends. Um, and in this case, it, it really depends. Uh, with them just sitting in a book closed like this over time, they will deteriorate from the acidity of the paper. They'll turn more yellow. They might become slightly more brittle. But generally, they'll stay in good condition. Um, it, like I said, if they were being used regularly, brought out, uh, handled often, then it would be something where we would want to consider the impact that that has on the, the preservation and quality of the materials. Um, and then we would consider things like the acidity of the pages themselves and um, kind of what effect regular handling of them would have. Um, so it is a concern, but given that they aren't handled very often and they aren't in regular constant use, um, it's not at the highest of priorities for our preservation budget. And, and that's what it all comes down to is um, budget. If we had unlimited funds, oh yeah, we would send these out, have them deacidified, have preservation work done on them, uh, no problem. Uh, we don't have an unlimited budget and we have to prioritize which items are most in need of preservation work um, in order to make sure that they last the longest. Uh, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Um, let's see, I was looking for, I wanted to see if I could find December. I'm curious. Um, this is December of 1941 that I'm looking for. Um, because some of the items in here have talked about national security and stuff like that. Um, So, so far, just Christmas stuff. Does anybody know why I was looking for December? Of 1941? Yeah, DWM, that is exactly why. I was looking to see if there would be any mention at all of anything to do with Pearl Harbor. Um, and it does not appear that there is. Uh, which, I mean, we are in Southwest Virginia. Um, I, But I thought maybe there would be a mention. Um, here in January, we have a safety program given. Uh, Blacksburg Women's Club met Wednesday afternoon in the lounge of the Faculty Center. Um, safe walking. But yeah, I had thought maybe there would be some things starting to show up relating to World War II um, because the program for this year, the 1940-1941 the um, program that was pasted at the beginning of this scrapbook um, had a lot of like uh, safety programs and um, that type of stuff that made me made me think maybe there would be mention of war-related stuff in here. But so far, I don't really see anything. <coughs> so here's another thing that would actually complement or complicate um, preservation work. If we were going to be looking at uh, acid remediation on these, um, the watercolor paintings on the on the construction paper um, would complicate the process. I don't have sorry, I got distracted. Something happened on the Rogan twenty seven channel. Melba, <laughs> thank you for gifting a sub to Ray Fay. <laughs> that. That was an effective distract and a, and a sneak attack for sure. 
Um, and and for resubscribing yourself. Thank you. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Remediation, uh, preservation. Um, so this this page here um, that I wish I could show off easier uh, with with my document camera it's kind of hard because it's a very large page but um, and all throughout this book uh, several tile ashtrays I'm not sure what that's a reference to DW um, what what I was trying to talk about was um, oh in the story I'll read the story in just a second. Um, the construction paper has actual watercolor art on it. And so each individual page where there's watercolor would actually be more of a work of art and would need to be considered in that lens for preservation purposes. Um, if there was gonna be any remediation done um, or preservation work done on the book, um, the deacidification process, I don't know what that would do to watercolor. The, whoever was doing the preservation work would have to um, research and find out um, possibly by taking samples to see what the deacidification process would do to the paints that were actually used. And that could actually be different for each individual watercolor. So it might do nothing to the purple, but actually completely wash out the green just by going through whatever treatment process they were doing. Um, and so when you get a mixed media item like a scrapbook like this, um, there are just layers and layers of things that can um, impact any sort of preservation work that could be done to it, which is why sometimes it makes sense just to leave them alone and let them exist as they are, even if that means that they will slowly deteriorate over time. Um, okay, I'm gonna read the story because now I'm curious about what you saw in it. Um, hold arts and crafts meeting. Uh, let me adjust my camera here. The Arts and Crafts Department of the Blacksburg Women's Club met at the home of Mrs. E. V. Russell Jr. Friday, February 7th at 3.30 p.m. There were seven members and three visitors present. Mrs. S. K. Castle, chairman of the group, called the meeting to order, and the minutes of the last meeting were read and approved. The program and exhibit for the April meeting were discussed at length. The members were asked to submit to Mrs. F. W. Bull, chairman of the exhibit committee, a list of the pieces of fancy work and art craft that they expected to have completed to enter in the exhibit. The group discussed Red Cross work and agreed to sew and knit garments for the Red Cross. Mrs. O. R. Vernon showed the group several tile ashtrays, leather belts, and cord coasters that she had made and explained their production. The members discussed the probability of making similar articles for the exhibit in April. The afternoon was spent in embroidering, crocheting, knitting, after, after which the hostesses served refreshments. Mrs. W.T. Powers asked the group to meet with her in March. From the Montgomery News Messenger, February 12, 1941. So yeah, tile ashtrays, leather belts, and cord coasters for their arts and crafts exhibit. Um, I can... I can guess what tile ashtrays would look like. In fact, I think I may have a tile ashtray at home that I use as a coaster. Um, so, interesting. Leather belts and cord coasters. I think I know what all of those would be. I mean, I know what a leather belt is for sure, but I also think I know what a cord coaster would be. Oh, wow. Look at the time. I'm actually going to close the book here because um, we got really absorbed in our uh, scrapbooks and it is time for me to end the stream. Um, 
I am in a, a reservable space, so I want to make sure that I'm not going too far over time. Um, thank you, everybody, who stopped by today. Uh, this is um, this is a show called Archival Adventures that I do every Wednesday from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. on twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios and on twitch.tv slash Rogan27. Um, so both of those streams are going at the same time. Uh, and for two hours, I pull out a collection from Special Collections and University Archives at Virginia Tech, and we go through it together. And most of the time, I've not seen what's in that collection previously, um, as was the case today. I had not really looked at these in the past. Um, next week, uh, the stream will be happening on April 14th. Um, and my tentative plan right now is to pull some items from the April 16th, 2007 condolence collection. Um, if you're unfamiliar, uh, April 16th, 2007, there was a, uh, a mass shooting here at Virginia Tech. In response to that, a number of condolence items were sent to the university, and we do have those in a collection at Virginia Tech. And so my tentative plan for next week is to pull out items from that collection. Um, that means that next week might be difficult for some people to watch, and I will definitely um, include that information in the stream title if we decide to share that collection. Um, my other option, if I decide that I don't want to do April 16th on the stream this year, um, uh, the alternative will be that I will be looking at the Denim Day Oral History Collection. Uh, so next week will either be April 16th or the Denim Day Oral History Collection. If I do April 16th, we will do Denim Day the next week. Uh, Denim Day was um, an event that happened in 1979 where the uh, uh, gay student organization here on campus um, held a gay awareness week and one of the days during that week was uh, asking students to wear wear jeans if they supported gay rights um, and we have a number of interviews oral history interviews on video that we took a couple of years ago for the 40th anniversary of that event um, so that will either be next week or the week after uh, depending on whether I find materials that are that I want to share for April 16th. Um, it's a delicate topic, and I, I want to make sure that the stream is welcoming for people as, as welcoming as possible. Um, so yeah, not sure next week. It'll either be April 16th or Denim Day. Um, and then we'll move on from there with some more LGBT-themed things for the rest of April, since April is when uh, Virginia Tech celebrates Pride, or um, I think it's LGBTQ plus history month is, is what we focus on here during April. But anyway, <laughs> um, let's go ahead and find out who we're going to raid today. Uh, and, and we'll close out the stream. Um, I have, I think since I have the two two channels and I want to raid the same place with both of them I think um, I think I have to do the Monterey Bay Aquarium let's see oh I'm not sure exactly what they're looking at but we'll go over and say hello to them um, the Monterey Bay Aquarium has a lovely stream that is always good to have on in the background. Um, they've got, it might be sea lions today. Um, so look forward to that. Um, Friday on VTUL Studios Twitch, uh, we will be having another episode of The Role of Play starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, um, where I will be uh, GM for a um, tabletop role-playing game using the Cypher system, um, where I was inspired by Isaac Asimov and Robert Silverberg's novel Nightfall. So if you're at all interested in that, stop by at twitch.tv slash VTULstudios Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. 
and um, say hello to everybody over at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and I will see you next time.